සුතින් අධිවේගය පරදා ඔබ මවිත කරවන වේගයක් බිඳ ගන්න. පියවර තුලින් ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකොම් ෆයිබර් ඔප්ටික් ජාලයට එක් වන්න. slp.lk වෙත පිවිසෙන්න. Making headlines on first at 9. Open invitation. President Maithripala Sirisena calls on all to propose solutions for issues where the government has failed. Think again. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha urges the government to reconsider the free trade agreement with Singapore. Polls misdemeanors. Chairman of the Election Commission calls for the removal of a local authority member following conviction. Election readiness. Socialist Alliance calls on the government to hold provincial council elections under the existing law. We want the will of the people, the democratic right, voting rights of the people to be respected. Tragedy in Lombok. 6.9 magnitude earthquake kills at least 98 people in Indonesia. A very good evening and welcome to First at Nine on Other Derana 24-7 Sri Lanka's news channel. I'm Katharina Chang. Now on to your top story tonight. President Maitri Pala Sirisin extends an invitation to all factions in the country to propose solutions to issues the government has failed to address. The president sent out the open invitation while addressing the launch of National Sustainability Dialogues draft. The launch of the draft for the National Sustainability Dialogue was held under the patronage of President Maitri Pala Sirisena at the BMI Sage this evening. Experts of the committee appointed on the National Sustainability Dialogue presented the draft to the President. I present you two problems to which we have failed to provide solutions. The first one is the human-elephant conflict. We're still unable to provide a solution for this. A grade 5 student sitting for the scholarship examination had to pay respects to the corpse of the child's father, who was attacked by an elephant. Another child who sat for the exam was attacked by an elephant on the way to the exam along with the child's mother. Anyone who thinks that this problem has a solution can meet me in private. The second is that 35% of the food production of this country is destroyed by animals. Monkeys are at the top of the list, including elephants, pigs and peacocks. While speaking of the country's health sector, the latest reports say that 15% of children below the age of 5 are emaciated. 17% of children below the age of 5 are shorter than the average height. Obesity among women is another issue. These are facts included in the latest reports by the Ministry of Health. Former President Mahinda Rajapaksha urges the government to reconsider the free trade agreement with Singapore. Responding to questions raised by media following a religious observance in Anuradhapura this morning, the former president said the FTA in question contains sections which are disadvantages to the country. Former President Mahinda Rajapaksa arrived in Anuradhapura this morning and engaged in religious observances at the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi. The former president also engaged in religious observances at the Ruan Valley Sire and Merisa Vatia. They had deals and not us. They had deals during the recent election and even today there are deals among the president, the prime minister and Anurag Kumar. He voices the prime minister's will in parliament. All investigations are in process. No investigation has stopped. Court cases are also filed. They should immediately reconsider the agreement as it contains certain points which are disadvantaged to us. <laughs> National organizer of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumana Basil Rajapaksha accuses the government of harassing the public and harming the country's independence. The former minister was critical of the government's conduct during a rally organized by the party in Balapitiya yesterday. Meanwhile, addressing another rally of the SRP in Badegama, convener of the Patriotic Professionals Forum, Dr. Nalika Godaheva shared similar sentiment, pointing the finger at the government's profligacy. 
This government is harassing the public. They are selling state property. They are harming the country's independence and sacrificing our war heroes. Taxes of all goods have increased. While they increase taxes on this side, the benefit of this is being distributed to their ministers and their close associates. Meanwhile, another phase of the campaign Pudujana Rala organized by the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna was held in Badegama yesterday. In 2014, the total income earned by taxes was 1 trillion rupees. In 2018, it is 2 trillion rupees. While prices of goods are on the rise, the government expenditure has increased by 80%. They are squeezing money out of you and me. They are wasting the income they receive. It's not invested in anything. It has been 10 months and a few days since they dissolved three provincial councils. It will be exactly 35 days until provincial councils in the north are dissolved. There won't be any election. After 45 days, they will dissolve northwestern and central provinces, but there won't be an election. This government is infected by fear of elections. The 25th ASEAN Regional Forum on Promoting Peace and Security Through Dialogue in the Asia-Pacific was held last Saturday in Singapore and the Sri Lankan delegation was led by Minister of Foreign Affairs Tilak Marapara. Inaugurated in 1994 in Thailand, the ASEAN Regional Forum is the principal forum for security dialogue in the region, which seeks to promote regional development and prosperity while recognizing challenges to regional peace, security and prosperity. Delivering Sri Lanka's statement at the forum, Foreign Minister Tilak Marapana highlighted the important areas of cooperation for Sri Lanka, including maritime security, disaster management and defence-related confidence-building measures. Parliamentarian Uday Gamampila is of the view that the government should cease promoting names for the position of opposition leader, making a case as to why the opposition leader should be a representative of the joint opposition. MP Gamampila also highlighted that what he cited as contradictory conduct of the government. Other Current leader of the opposition, Ar Sambandan, and his Tamil National Alliance are not playing the role of the opposition but rather the government's tail. Even though our speaker does not understand that 70 is more than 16, a second grade student comprehends it. We are denied the position of opposition leader, citing that 25 members of the UPFA are holding posts in the government despite 70 being in the opposition. From January to June of 2015, the leader of the opposition was Nimal Siripal de Silva, who was representing the alliance. While he was holding this position, many from the opposition left to join the 100-day government and were appointed ministers. Government leaders should therefore explain to the public as to why it is wrong to appoint Dinesh Gunavardhan as the opposition leader when it was all right for Nimal Siripal de Silva to hold the post. Therefore, what the government should do is to hand over the position of opposition leader to us. We have collectively decided who we wish to appoint to the post. Manufacturers today responded to the comments made by parliamentarian Kumar Valgame yesterday, where he criticized fellow parliamentarian Mahindananda Alutgamage. In his speech, MP Valgame responded to the comments of parliamentarian Alutgamage, who claimed that MP Valgame fills the boots of a comedian in the party. Parliamentarian Kumar Velgama criticized fellow parliamentarian Mahindananda Alutgamage during the Kalutara District Youth Conference yesterday. Mahindananda Mahatya Kiyenuwa. Mahinda Anandalud Gamage says that it's useless talking about myself since I play the role of a joker. I say that he did not have a spine to speak up at the Central Committee meeting and to show up at a rally held in Nugegoda. Who is the real joker? I am not afraid to say that there are people in the opposition who have deals with the government. The comments of parliamentarian Velgama drew many opinions in the political arena. We are a democratic party. We debate among ourselves, which sometimes leads to minor issues. But when we take a decision, everyone will stand by that decision. We have never fallen to pieces. This is an argument between two of our fellow MPs. But the problems within Sirikota and the SLFP are more critical. So this isn't a big issue. I saw Kumara Velgama vitriolically criticizing Mahinda Nandaludgamage. Today, the joint opposition is criticizing its fellow members in public. Chennai 
Leader of the Janata Vimukta Perumuna Parliamentarian Anura Kumar Disanayak alleges that foreign companies and embassies are entrusted with making political and economic decisions of Sri Lanka. MP Disanayak made these allegations addressing a public rally held in Pooja Peter of Kandy yesterday. We are not making political decisions. Economic decisions are made by foreign companies while political decisions are taken by the embassies. When there is a conflict between the president and the prime minister, Ranil goes to the American embassy and informs them. He tells them that the president has an issue with him and calls for intervention to resolve the matter. Rajpaksha has taken 7.6 million US dollars from the Chinese companies and it is proven. People vote and elect a president to make decisions for them. He takes money from Chinese companies and makes decisions as they want. We have to safeguard the country from that. The government is infested from the top. The prime minister's name is connected to the bond scam. He appointed Mahendran as the governor. The controversial transaction took place on February 27th of 2015. I questioned him in parliament on the 16th March the same year. He protected him saying no fraud took place. The theft begins from temple trees. This is an administration system which they made for themselves. Meanwhile, the Socialist Alliance calls on the government to hold provincial council elections under the existing law as further delays could be caused in introducing a new law. Holding media briefing today, the Alliance added that attempts are being made to postpone elections. question of the provincial council elections, which are being uh, not held, some of them, and some of them which are falling due this year, there are various maneuvers to de delay them. We would like to state very clearly as uh, the Socialist Alliance that any new act or law comes into effect only when it is implemented. So if there is any problem regarding the new law and there, there is going to be a delay due to the need for amendments, then the government can very easily not resort to this new uh, law, but instead make use of the existing law, which is valid even now. And we want the will of the people, the democratic right, voting rights of the people to be respected and the elections to be held on the due date as they should be. Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya, expresses concern over the postponement of elections, saying it is not the right thing to do. Deshapriya expressed his views on the matter while addressing an event held in Colombo today. A workshop for elected women representatives of the Colombo Municipal Council was held today under the patronage of Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya. We have to speak politics. Power of the people cannot be allowed to be snatched away. No matter who it is, it's wrong to postpone elections. These matters should be discussed. Our country thinks that politics is dirty and it's an infectious disease. No, it's not. If one speaks politics at a temple during the election period, their civic rights will be nullified. There were allegations that no action was taken on people who violated election laws. 385 cases were filed by the police. After being proven guilty, one paid a fine of 100 rupees. We have filed a petition to remove him from the post. Police say five suspects from the gang that robbed 20 million rupees from an ATM in Bulat Singhala are arrested. Police have seized over 1.6 million rupees in cash, gold worth 348,000 rupees, which is suspected to have been purchased with the stolen money, as well as Jeep. On the 28th of July, a sum of 20 million rupees was stolen from a private company who were on their way to replenish cash at an ATM in Bulat Singhala. The suspects reportedly had thrown chili powder at the team when they were dining at a restaurant in the area. The police said that it was revealed that the security guard who arrived with the team had neglected his weapon in a suspicious manner and was arrested on the same day on suspicion of abating the robbery. The police are conducting investigations to ascertain whether the security company is connected to the robbery. 
Minister of Finance and Mass Media today issued a statement saying that an agreement was reached to amend the process of the expenditure calculation for the purpose of income tax payment by specialist doctors. The decision was arrived at following a discussion between Minister of Finance Mangla Samaravira and the Association of Medical Specialists today. Meanwhile, Government Medical Officers Association alleges that the government is engaged in an effort to dissolve the Sri Lanka Medical Council. Addressing a media briefing in Colombo today, the GMO has said that they will move for a trade union action if it comes to pass. Reliably informed that there are attempts made with the resignation of Professor Colleen Gunratna and also uh, the letter forwarded by Professor Nilanthi De Silva to a Minister of Health in this regard. Therefore, the GMO Executive Committee has unanimously decided that we should write to the His Excellency the President, who as the previous Minister of Health knows very well about the functions of the Sri Lanka Medical Council, its role in protecting the rights of the patients and uh, protecting the safety of their lives by ensuring the standards of medical education. Therefore, we have written a request letter to on, uh, His Excellency the President to immediately intervene and uh, defeat the attempts by Minister of Health to dissolve the Sri Lanka Medical Council. And therefore, we have requested all the branch unions all over the country to display banners, posters all over the country, and they will raise black flags uh, in the, within the next few days. We have observed uh, the consequences of what has happened in India after dissolving the Indian uh, Medical Council. And the, here the uh, sinister moves by the minister and the other NGO people around him uh, to dissolve the Medical Council. We as the GMO Executive Committee today has unanimously decided to go for a urgent and a stern trade union measures if the minister is going to do any harm to the health system by dissolving the Sri Lanka Medical Council. The 38-year-old who was receiving treatment at the Panurudha Base Hospital after falling ill during a musical concert held in Vado yesterday succumbed today. Three people who attended the performance died yesterday after falling ill during the event. Meanwhile, a post-mortem examination of the disease was also conducted. Three people who attended a musical concert held at a beachside hotel yesterday were admitted to the Panadur Base Hospital after falling ill during the event. One person was pronounced dead upon admission to the hospital, while two others died during the course of yesterday. The only remaining person from the four who was in critical condition died around 11.30 this morning. Deputy Medical Superintendent of the hospital, Dr. P. G. Hemantakumara, said that high temperature and increased heart rate were at the centre of the deaths. Yesterday, there were four admissions to our PCU early in the morning at about 3.30 a.m. There were four patients admitted to our hospital. We found that their body temperature is very high and heart rate is very high, respiratory rate is very high. They develop multi-organ failure. Some patients develop fits. We found that there are some toxins uh, ingestion by the people. We don't know what kind of toxins. The post-mortem examination was conducted this afternoon by Panadura Additional Magistrate Kalhari Lianage. The magistrate ordered burials instead of cremations, as there could be further investigations. Meanwhile, parts of the bodies have been sent to the judicial medical officer, Dr. Utpala Artigala, to conduct the forensic pathology. Investigations into the incident are being conducted by the Vadu police, and statements have been recorded from the private company and the owner of the hotel, who organized the concert. The hotel is provided with police security until the government analyst inspects the hotel premises. We will be able to come to a conclusion on the cause of death following the report compiled by the judicial medical officer. We used police dogs to detect whether any narcotics have been used at the concert, but we couldn't detect anything of such nature. If the investigation reveals the use of any illegal substances during the concert, we will take strict action on its organizers. We will join you more news after this short commercial break. Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7.
On to business news now. Oil ro uh, rose pr prices rose today after Saudi crude production registered an unexpected decline in July and U.S. drilling appeared to slow, although the price is still almost 10 percent below its 2018 high of more than $80 a barrel. Saudi Arabia pumped around 10.29 million barrels per day of crude in July. Two OPEC sources said on Friday, down about 200,000 barrels per day from a month earlier. That drop came despite a pledge by the Saudis and top producer Russia in June to raise output from July, with Saudi Arabia pledging a measurable supply boost. Brent crude oil futures were up 31 cents on the day at 73.52 cents a barrel, while U.S. futures rose 35 cents to $68.84 a barrel. Via a combination of pipelines. Most extreme drilling rig in the world, the Eric Roud. Through more of the Earth's fossil fuels, exploration for. The Sri Lankan rupee ended slightly firmer today as inward remittances surpassed early demand for the US dollar from foreign banks. The rupee, which traded at 159.88 rupees per dollar during the day, ended at 159.70 to 80 per dollar, compared with Friday's close of 159.75 to 85. Let's now take a look at foreign exchange rates. Sri Lankan shares closed flat today after gaining for two straight sessions on mild profit booking as investors awaited fresh triggers amid thin trading. The Osha price index ended 0.02% lower at 6,142.65. Meanwhile, turnover stood at 296.3 million Sri Lankan rupees, well below this year's daily average of 840 million rupees. For analysis of today's trading session, we have Dimantha Matthew from First Capital Holdings. The Bourse closed in the red dragged down by Dialogue and uh, Commercial Bank, uh, reversing the positive sentiment that was there in the last two days. ASPI saw an uh, upward trend during the first hour of trading, reaching an uh, intraday high of uh, 6150, followed by a downward trend, reaching an intraday low of 6130, but closing at uh, 6143, marginally losing one point. To one of our headline making news now, some hundred, ten, rather some 10,000 people have been evacuated on the Indonesian island of Lombok after a powerful 6.9 magnitude quake on Sunday left more than 98 people dead and over 200 injured. The National Disaster Mitigation Agency says that no foreigners were among the dead so far. Witnesses spoke of chaos and terror as buildings collapsed and power and communication lines were cut. Rescue workers found scenes of destruction across the north of Indonesia's resort island of Lombok today after a magnitude 6.9 earthquake killed close to 100 people and prompted an exodus of tourists rattled by the second powerful quake in a week. In total, an estimated 20,000 people have been displaced by the massive earthquake. A video on social media showed a man was rescued from under the rubble of a collapsed wall. More than 350 tourists have been moved so far from the three Gili Islands, an area famous for its white sandy beaches and clear waters. An estimated 600 tourists continue to await rescue. There was like a big stampede and everyone fell and there were like three or four people who fell on top of me and that's when my knee got uh, injured. Yeah, I just want to get out somewhere safe, somewhere I know where I'm not going to be at the risk of natural disasters and yeah, whatever it takes really. <laughs> 
The National Disaster Mitigation Agency said it expected the death toll to rise once the rubble of more than 13,000 flattened and damaged houses is cleared away, but a lack of heavy equipment meant this would take time. Power and communications were cut in some areas of Lombok, with landslides and a collapse bridge hampering access to the north. The Indonesian military said it was sending in a ship with medical aid supplies and logistical support. The Indonesian Agency for Meteorology, Climatology and Geophysics said that more than 120 aftershocks were recorded after Sunday evening's quake, whose magnitude the US Geological Survey revised down to 6.9 from an original 7 point. In the United States, at least 40 people were shot in Chicago over the weekend during the seven hours from midnight Saturday to early Sunday morning with four fatalities. A stark violence streak in a city where authorities say gun violence has been decreasing this year. Chicago Police Department says the shooting were both random and targeted. Chicago police said gunmen targeted a block party, a gathering after a funeral and other gatherings on a night where thousands of people gathered for a downtown concert. Local media reported that the brunt of the violence happened in the city's west side where 25 people were shot in separate attacks. Police records show of the wounded who reported an age, the oldest was 62 and the youngest 11. We will not, I promise you that we will not uh, be defeated. We need more help from our uh, judicial system, we need more help from our federal partners and we're getting it, but we won't be defeated in this. Chicago has struggled with high shooting and murder rates in recent years. Chicago police state shootings are down 30% from 2017 and murders are down 25%. June marked 15 straight months of fewer killings and shootings. However, on June 25th, at least 21 were shot and two died. Six people have been arrested in Venezuela for involvement in an apparent assassination attempt on President Nicolas Maduro. Interior Minister of Venezuela, Nestor Riverol, said they were part of a group that loaded two drones with explosives and set them off during a military parade in capital Caracas. Maduro has warned the perpetrators face maximum punishment. He has blamed Colombia for the incident but provided no evidence. Colombia said the, accu the accusations was baseless. The government has also pointed the finger at the opposition, prompting fears of a new crackdown. More news will come your way after this break. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, other than 24-7. In your weather forecast for the next 24 hours now, fairly strong gusty winds of up to 50 kilometers per hour can be expected in the central hills and in Uva, Sabragamo, north central, southern and eastern provinces. Meanwhile, some wet weather can be expected in Sabragamo, central and western provinces. Meanwhile, light showers are forecast for the districts of Gaul and Madra. With that, let's now take a look at your city by city forecast. And that is all we have from Adha Dharana, first at 9 for tonight. But before we go, we'd like to take you to Riverstone. Located approximately 30 kilometers from the Matle town, Riverstone offers scenic beauty with two great waterfalls, Siralla and Bambara Kiriala. We hope you like these visuals and have a pleasant evening. Bringing you 
you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varanar 24-7.